Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a game in Unity and welcome to episode 48. In this tutorial we're going to quickly explore tags again because I feel that since our original talk about tags there is a little bit more that could be said. And we're also going to take a look at bringing in our final NPC and working with that NPC with its animation to get it a bit more active than what our previous ones are. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon to stay up to date with this series and everything else on our channel, old, new, upcoming, it's fantastic. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So if you remember a long, long time ago, we originally had some tags involving this warp over here. And this whole idea of what we had with tags is making sure that we were what we said we were. And you can see everything here that we had everything going on. Yep, it's all good. But the idea of a tag, if we go to here, untagged, we have these ones that we set. Now, in game development, it's worth me explaining that most things are actually tagged. They have a unique reference. Sometimes not exactly unique. However, maybe it is best to be unique sometimes. For example, each NPC could have its own tag. The reason being is that because we can then identify them via scripting. And we did do that if we go into our scripts folder. And I believe it is warp down here. Yes, it's a little bit of an old script, uh, but the idea is still the same. We can still detect what that actually is. For example, here, warp 001, because that is the tag. It's another good way of noticing what things are. So on that premise, let's add tags to this NPC here. So tag, let's change from untagged. Let's go on add tag and click on plus and new tag. Let's have this as NPC and save. So any NPC in the game should now probably be tagged NPC. That at least gives us a bit more control over what we're doing with the NPCs because they could be enemies. They could be anything. We kind of don't know that. So it's best to kind of go through and tag things which are somewhat important. So as it stands now, we have three NPCs, all tagged with NPC. And it will become a little bit more relevant and apparent why we're doing this in the next tutorial. So what I'm going to do now is bring in another NPC and I'm going to have him somewhere around here, kind of in the long grass. Now I've been to the asset store and I've selected this particular one. I'm not sure how new it is. I think it might be relatively new, but obviously no input from myself here. This has all been developed by this uh, creator here. Please, if you want to have a look, take a look at what else they have. And if you don't want to use this, obviously select uh, something else. It's entirely up to you. So if you want to import, download, and I've already gone ahead and I have it right here. So this is where we're going to play around with the NPC to make them more active and actually do things rather than just stand still like a lemon. So in the prefabs folder of this one, we have the character and I'm going to bring it in here. Now by default, he's just going to be in his normal standard pose and going to increase his size as well to make it a little bit bigger, to make it more realistic. And by default, I think it has a focus point, which we can get rid of. All that means is it's got a camera looking at him and we don't really need that at this point. So if we press play now and take a look at him, he's not going to do anything at all. Literally, Where he's just I? going to stand there. I need to find a way. So let's have him in an idle pose, a constant idle pose. Now to do that, the way animations work in this case, it's not necessarily the same with all animations in Unity, but for the, in the case of this model, it is. I specifically selected this model to show you how we're going to do this with animations. So we need to go to the animations folder and then let's go to standard. And we have right here, I think this is, that's walk, is this idle? We'll use this one, this idle right here. So this is the animation we're going to use to make him just kind of stand idle, so a little bit of movement. But to do that, we need to actually select the FBX down here first. We need to make sure we're on rig up here. Animation type needs to be changed to generic and the avatar definition needs to be changed to create from this model and then click apply. Now, the reason we do this to this particular uh, model, you'll also notice that we've had this appear right here. The others don't have it. 
So if you're using animations and extracting them from um, FBX files, make sure it has this because then this basically applies it to this model rather than be its own standalone animation. And like I say, in this case, this animation will now work with whatever we attach it to, in this case, the correct model. So let's hold control, press D to duplicate that out of the FBX so it becomes its own file. Uh, we do need to set it to a debug menu over here. And we need to set to legacy because we're using the animation component because we want to be able to control that animation. And then let's head back to normal. Wrap mode is now loop. So if we go to our character, uh, by default, it's got a couple of uh, input scripts. I think you should be able to kind of move him around if you wanted to. Uh, I'm going to remove those components because they are not necessary. He is an NPC not a player and remove the animator as well because as i say we're using animation so let's add component let's type in animation select and now let's drag and drop our standard idle but i think what i'm going to do is actually rename it first so f2 i'm just going to rename to idle and then head back onto our character and drag and drop that animation onto here It'll automatically change the size to one and element zero. And now let's press play. So we've been able to manipulate our NPC. Where am to I? To be in an idle pose. I need and to you find can see a way him out of this wood. Moving just ever so slightly. So that is now his idle pose. The same principle also applies with every animation that we're going to use. So let's take the walk animation. Remember, we need to select the FBX file. We need to go over, make sure we're on rig up here, change the animation type to generic and change the avatar definition to create from model. This is the most important thing of the whole process. This is what makes the animation able to work within its environment on the NPC. So click apply and you'll see that extra thing appear there. Now that means we can hold control, press D to duplicate that out of there. And now change the debug click legacy, head back onto normal, change to, in fact, let's have it as loop because then we can see him walk on the spot. Why not? And let's rename to walk. Next, let's go back onto the character and just drag and drop that animation onto it, the default animation up here, and it will add it there. So now we can press play and we'll be able to see him walk on the spot. It looks ridiculous. Where am yes. I? Yes. But I it just proves the concept of, of how we're using the animation to control the NPC itself. He's looking pretty good there. So now what we're going to do, one final thing before we finish this tutorial off, is actually control that animation using a trigger. So I'm going to use a cube as a trigger. That means, for example, he's going to stand there idle. And when we walk up to him, he'll start his motion of walking, which will lead us nicely on to the next tutorial. So for starters, let's have game object, 3D object, and let's go to cube. This will be our trigger. So let's click on is trigger right there. Let's head to our scripts folder down here. Right click, create C sharp script, and let's have this as NPC trigger. And let's open up in Visual Studio. So obviously what we're going to have to do here is declare our variable, the NPC. So public game object, uh, we'll just have the NPC semicolon. And now, uh, in fact, no, we don't need any more variables, do we? We can just go void on trigger enter. And it does not need to be private, so we can get rid of that. And essentially, all we really need to do is just have the NPC dot get component animation open oh, close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes walk and semicolon and save. Now we'll come back to this in a couple of minutes just to kind of work different ways of triggers. You know, we've dealt with triggers before, but we've never dealt with them using uh, uh, to be used on an NPC in this case. So let's attach the NPC trigger to the cube. 
and then rename that cube to NPC activate and we just need to set the NPC into there so I think I'm also going to rename character to be NPC 004 and head back to the cube set that variable all the way over there and remember let's change him back to default as idle so let's find his animation which is in here and idle is the default so press play and if we go over and look at him he's just stood there where am i but then that trigger I if you could imagine way out would be wood. let's say his proximity he would realize you're getting close and there we go he starts walking now the same principle can apply with on trigger exit so void on trigger exit again it does not need to be private and we can use the exact same line of code there and we can change that to idle and save so essentially what is happening now is that whenever we get close he starts walking off whenever this kind of we come out of this trigger he stops and like i say it leads us on nicely to what we're going to do next tutorial because the next one's going to be a lot of fun i need to find a so, way out of this you can wood. see there he goes walking but then we exit the trigger he stops back in his idle position now obviously there's plenty of other animations that you could work with here so let's have a look what we've got here board by cheer let's do cheer let's quickly do cheer and see how this is so remember animation type generic create from this model apply extract the animation change debug legacy head back normal and we'll have this as just once so whenever we get close he'll cheer so let's add cheer uh, onto the animations that so let's change that to three and then cheer becomes element two and then on trigger enter we can change that to cheer save press play so by default he's just going to stand there in his idle position and when we get close where am he'll i cheer i need to find a way out of this wood there we go so that is how we can use animations within NPCs to control them, control their actions and everything else. So next time we're going to code some AI for this particular uh, NPC and we're going to have him walk around. We're going to have him maybe stop, maybe cheer every now and again. So we're going to have a little bit of random coding to it to kind of give him a little bit of life. And yeah, basically we're just going to have him wander around and be an NPC like you'd expect to find in the game. So guys, until that next episode, yeah, you just find your NPC that you want. That's all it really is to it. And just make sure you get your animations working. And I will see you next time for some AI coding. Guys, thank you very much for watching.